Welcome back, 365 Sports. Grayson Grunhafer, Sikkim365.com recruiting analyst. And Grayson, we had Dave Aranda on earlier. Uh, we'll get your thoughts on that. Jake Spavital is aboard. So first off the bat, though, how do you feel that Jake Spavital coming on board will affect their recruiting, not only in high school, uh, which he didn't do at his last head coaching job, but uh, will obviously have to do that now, and in the transfer portal, which he did do at his last head coaching job? Well, you know, I, I think it's really interesting, right, because he has coached in Texas before, and he is a guy who I do think um, is going to be one who appeals a lot with the high school prospects around the state, especially because his scheme, uh, it really fits a lot of the schemes in Texas. And that was something that I know a lot of people have talked about with, you know, the wide zone scheme being something that's a little bit harder to adjust to, harder to learn. Um, so I think this spread scheme will definitely fit you know, many of the wide receivers, the running backs, and of course the quarterbacks throughout the country. And, you know, just talking to some of the commits and, you know, that Baylor already has, whether it's Adam Schobel or Nate Bennett, um, you know, the two quarterback commits that Baylor has in 2024 and 2025, they're both really excited uh, for the kind of offense that he's going to bring in and excited for the change and um, the explosiveness of his offense, I think is going to be really exciting. So yeah, I think it's going to appeal a lot to recruits across the country and um, you know, for Dave Rand and this staff, I, I think this was kind of uh, a near perfect hire. I, I'm not going to say that he's the best offense coordinator in the country. He, he isn't that, but he's definitely a very good one. And a guy who also comes with something that I think Dave Aranda uh, specifically really wanted in his offense coordinator. And that's a guy who does have head coaching experience in his past, uh, which Babel, Babel does have. So, yeah, I think in general, this this is a very, very nice hire for Baylor and, and one that I think definitely should uh, raise their ceiling going into next year and help on the recruiting trail as well. Grayson, what's it like to see all of these declarations from players? Uh, it's kind of wild, right, to see guys who maybe even just signed a year ago that are already like, hey, I'll be back again, rather than just like you sign up and you're there for four years. It's a different world they're playing in. Um, but, you know, always tagging GXG Exchange because clearly that's the NIL collective. Have you noticed um, a buzz or have you noticed a, a positive trend in that direction as far as just the the declarations and the involvement of the NIL wing and, and how that's all working now as opposed to previously? I mean, it, it's definitely different. You know, this is the time of the year where players typically post pictures that they got from the season and just say, you know, can't wait for next year or what a season, you know, getting ready for next year, the grind never stops, things like that. But this year it's much more, um, you know, I'm going to be back, you know, another year uh, that I'm going to be in Waco. And then, of course, like you said, tagging GXG. Um, you know, I think it's important for Baylor. Um, they haven't really – spotlighted their NIL collective very much at all over the last year, two years, really. Um, so I think it's important for them to start, you know, making that a little bit more public. And so I like that they're doing this. I think it's going to be very helpful. I think it definitely speaks to uh, recruiting and to your players that, you know, you are competitive on the NIL side of things, which, you know, I, I think there's this false narrative that Baylor hasn't been competitive with NIL because they have. They just haven't necessarily gone about it the right way. And I think them shifting their focus a little bit um, and changing up some things on that front uh, should definitely help some things on the recruiting trail, whether it's from high school recruits, the transfer portal, or, of course, your own roster, which is just as important these days. Has anybody jumped out that said, hey, I'm coming back? I just saw Trey Emery there a little while ago. Uh, didn't notice George Maye. He is entering the transfer portal. But has anything been... I guess, surprising, illuminating, or just good confirmation of like, oh, hey, good to see that guy making a declaration? Uh, I wouldn't say that anything has necessarily been crazy, you know, alarming in a good way. I mean, Brendan Beck coming back, that was one that I feel like is very important. He's a very good player and an important piece up front. And, you know, he kind of fits that narrative that Baylor really has been uh, pushing, you know, just trying to keep their young guys right and, and trying to find a way to make sure that all their young guys who showed flashes this year come back to the program and continue to build on what they did this year so that kind of fits that profile and as you mentioned with George Maye entering the portal um, you know that one's tough to see and I know a lot of people are going to look at it and say oh former four star that's a huge loss for Baylor and you know maybe it will be uh, but I also think he was recruited for a different scheme and, and the fact of the matter is is 
he wasn't able to play very meaningful snaps this year and the offensive line was as bad as it was. And so I think that's pretty telling. And now this shift with Jake Fabadol coming in, it is going to mix some things up on the offensive side. So that really shouldn't be all that surprising. So Grayson, your thoughts on uh, Dave Aranda's comments on the show uh, an hour and a half ago. Well, I mean, the most, I, I, I don't know about most important, but probably the most significant news from it was talking about how Jake Spavadol was having a meeting with Blake Shapin and they're trying to figure out, you know, what Blake Shapin's future is going to be. Uh, the report earlier this week was that Shapin was going to enter the transfer portal or planning to enter the transfer portal since he technically can't till December 4th. Um, but I think it was really important that they were able to get their offense coordinator in the building, get him to have that conversation quickly, not only with Blake Shapin, but with the entire team and then figure out things and, and the direction that they're moving in uh, going forward because he's going to have to get ready to recruit the transfer portal as well. So kind of solving, you know, all the issues of the roster, the current roster, making sure he knows who's going to be there and who isn't going to be there is really important and really significant when you talk about trying to figure out how many spots you have available and what spots you need to recruit uh, from the transfer portal. What did you think about uh, just the – Changes on defense. Uh, he made mention that you know he was sitting there listening as they were making the calls there on that final drive, but also talked about you know obviously there's a lot of love for Pallage and there's a lot of belief in what he can be in the future. But uh, Dave's going to coach linebackers and he's going to be playing you know calling the plays. We talked to Ricky Thompson. He's like, well, it's what I wanted to hear. What, what, what say you uh, as far as Aranda grabbing the reins over on defense? I mean, I don't really think he had a choice at this point. Sure. I mean, the defense hasn't been very good for, you know, the last at least year and a half. And you could say it even stretches further uh, back than that. And so you kind of look at it and go, well, you know, Dave Rand was on the hot seat this offseason, uh, a very hot seat. We know going into next year that he's only going to be hotter. And the fact of the matter is you got to use your strength. And what we know from Dave Aranda during his coaching career is that he knows how to coach defense and has had a lot of successful defenses throughout his entire career. So why not go ahead and lean into that strength? And so I think it's very important for him to do this. I think it allows him to uh, really show his best qualities as a coach. And I think that's the most important thing. When you're a head coach, you got to really, really, really lean into your strength. And I think him coaching the defense coaching it day to day, every single day, and then also calling the plays is going to be extremely important for the development of these young guys while also giving Baylor an established defensive identity. I, I think that's just so important to this whole equation. Uh, but it's also a big reason that he brought in someone like Jake Spavadol to come in because he's got head coaching experience. Dave Rand's going to feel really comfortable with him running the offense day to day and not really have to be uh, extremely focused on that side of the ball. And I think that's extremely important and something that's going to be huge for the program going forward. And I also like that Dave said he was going to coach linebackers as well. Uh, that's been the position that he's really uh, – that's been his strong suit throughout his career is coaching linebackers. And he's going to do that, of course, with Christian Robinson as well, um, who's a very good recruiter. And I'm happy that he's going to be returning uh, because I do think there's some uh, big strengths that he has. And I think he's got a bright future going forward, just like Matthew Pallage does. Grayson Grudet for sick 365com Grayson, thanks so much for, for pushing back and, and dealing with our – we had a very crazy first hour in this building uh, today. Finally, like, it's been a, a near three-year process to get Dave Aranda in the room. So it was, it was a big deal to get the Baylor coach here in the building today. So thanks for, thanks for moving your time. Oh, no doubt. I mean, you got Dave Aranda to come into the studio. I'm happy to be pushed back on a day like that. So, yeah, no, absolutely really cool stuff. And thanks for having me on still today, guys. All right. Grayson Greenhaver, Sikkim365.com. In the next hour.